The news that has eclipsed all news here in America over the past week and a half has been the selection of Alaska Governor Sarah Palin to run for vice president on the Republican ticket. It is hard to say who's gone wilder, conservative voters with support, or the media and left side of the blogosphere with smears and attacks. Either way, no one can stop talking about her. Now it's our turn. As independent conservatives ourselves, there's an awful lot to like about her and many of her positions. But we have a very specific focus on this show, so we have to ask the question, what is her position on illegal immigration? The answer is, we have no clue. We've scoured the internet for news, a quote, or a position statement and come up empty-handed. We posed the question on our blog and commenters were quick to jump to Palin's defense, even though we weren't condemning her, just looking at some facts about Alaska, which is all we have to go on at this point. Some question that Alaska even has to deal with much illegal immigration. Here's what we found. Both Judiciary Watch and the Sanctuary Cities website list Alaska as a sanctuary state since 2003, before Palin became governor. Alaska's first Mexican consulate opens this month, with a celebration of Mexican Independence Day. Alaska is one of only 11 states that issue driver's licenses to illegal aliens. There's an MS-13 gang cell in, of all places, Kodiak, Alaska. And FAIR estimates that Alaska taxpayers spent $27 million on illegal alien students in 2004. The fact that she hasn't co-authored an amnesty bill isn't enough for us to throw our support behind her. Which brings us to the reason, and a reminder, about why we really can't do that. She's still running to be second in command to John McCain, a.k.a. Juan McAmnesty, because he did co-author an amnesty bill. The same John McCain who in Thursday night's nomination acceptance speech said, quote, from the person whose family came on the Mayflower to the Latina daughter of a migrant worker, we are all Americans. Neither means you are or are not an American, because neither is part of the criteria for being or becoming one. But that doesn't change the fact that there are criteria. We're not here to take sides or endorse any candidate in this election. But we are all about illegal immigration and want to remind people that no matter how great Sarah Palin may be, the next President of the United States will either be a war hero who is desperate to dissolve our borders and turn this nation into Alto Mexico, or a Harvard-educated community organizer who thinks that an ill-timed sneeze is racism, oh, and who's desperate to dissolve our borders and turn this nation into Alto Mexico. So our bottom line on the Barracuda? Lots to like, lots to ask, and lots to remember. Just trying to keep it real. And in that spirit, we say thank goodness an amnesty-loving president doesn't necessarily equate to another amnesty being shoved down the throats of the American people. We, the people, don't go down that easily. And there's a certain amnesty-loving president in the White House right now who's got the bruises to prove it. The Victims Three California females, aged 14, 17, and 23. The accused, Miguel Angel Barrera, 44, an illegal alien from Argentina. The charges, one count each of rape, lewd acts, and sodomy, and two counts each of obscene matter, oral copulation, and penetration. The story. Barrera was arrested on August 14th and has entered a plea of not guilty on all charges. Prosecutors, however, say he is the man who has been calling himself Sergio and claiming to be a photographer with entertainment connections to lure his victims off the streets of Hollywood and North Hollywood. Once he talked them into his car, he took them to a local motel where he snapped photographs and sexually assaulted them. Given his M.O., police suspect there are more than these three cases and have gone public with Barrera's identity in the hopes that any other victims will come forward. As a matter of fact, it looks like he's been at it for some time. Police have learned that 13 years ago, Montebello police arrested Barrera for child annoyance after he lured a 16-year-old girl into his car. Fortunately, the girl got away, but so did Barrera, due to insufficient evidence to prosecute the case. How many victims might be out there? Who knows? 
but police say that he's lived here for 22 years, illegally since his residency application was denied. Of course, if our government had been doing its job, getting and keeping illegal aliens out of our country, Barrera wouldn't have remained here to sexually assault God knows how many women, including the 14, 17, and 23-year-old who had the courage to come forward and tell their stories. And that makes these crimes what? 100% preventable. The victim, a six-year-old Ocala, Florida girl. The accused, Ricardo Amaya, 25, an illegal alien. The charges, sexual assault and sexual battery of a victim under 12. The story, the six-year-old girl told investigators that Amaya placed her on the bed, pulled her pants down and molested her, and that when she tried to scream for help, he covered her mouth. Amazingly, the girl had the courage to tell her mom almost immediately, who in turn called the police. And if you guess that if convicted, Ricardo Amaya will be counted for the stats as one more white criminal, Arizona white that is, you spot on mate. Of course, if our utterly feckless government had been doing its job, getting and keeping illegal aliens out of our country, Amaya wouldn't have been here to rip away the innocence of a six-year-old girl. And that makes this crime what? 100% preventable. We closed our first piece with a reminder that after eight years of rhetoric about illegal aliens just being good, hard-working people who violate our laws to get and stay here so they can do jobs Americans won't do, George W. Bush remains an amnesty-free president. We spend a lot of time bringing you stories about the negative impact of illegal immigration on our great country because we think it's incredibly important that Americans be informed about the issue. And let's face it, the MSM is anything but willing to do the job, to do their job when it comes to this subject. But today we want to take a brief break from the news to tell you how glad we are that you, our fellow citizens, are willing to do your jobs. We thank and salute you for every phone call and fax to your Congress critters, for every forwarded email and politically incorrect conversation about illegal immigration, for every click to watch this show, and for every click to send it to someone else who might be willing to join us as we stand up to Washington and refuse to be ignored by those elected to serve us. We thank and salute you for caring so deeply about America, its citizens, and its future. Our country has been blessed with freedom and opportunity that others dream of and long for. It's been paid for with blood, sweat, and tears. Those before us fought to get it, and we must fight to keep it. Thank you for fighting, and thank you for being an American. Thanks for clicking in to this week's episode of the Blogs for Borders video blog burst. We started the show talking about a feisty conservative woman, and we're going to close it out that way too. This week's episode is sponsored by an old broad's ramblings. In her own words, pro-life, pro-gun, right-wing Christian. Any questions? The right answer? No ma'am. Be sure to check out her magnificent ramblings at oldbroad.com. And don't forget that you too are only one click away from the fiscally responsible choice of supporting this show. Go to freedomfolks.com and look for this attractive support blogs for borders button which will whisk you off for a whirlwind visit to that exciting travel destination they call PayPal. And until next week, be vigilant, be vocal, and be unrelenting. We've got a country to save.